New York Giants week number 17 game preview, a meaningful week 17 game. And I think if I asked you guys in August, could you, would you sign up for a meaningful week 17 game, even if we're 5 and 11, 6 and 10, whatever the record will be? Um, I think we would all sign up for that. So I'm pretty excited that we get to watch some meaningful January football. Actually, Happy New Year to you guys. I have not said that yet, but Happy New Year to everybody. So meaningful week 17 January football for the Giants 2021. Um, this should be a fun game. I expect it to be pretty close. Um, as you see, I do have Dallas beating us by a little bit, but I do hope I'm wrong. I do want to win this game. I know some people want the better draft pick, which I get, but I can't say no to the playoffs. I, I want to win this game. So anyway, we'll jump to the offense. So for the Giants offense, Dallas's defense allows a league worst 161.1 rushing yards per game. Awful. I mean, the Giants had to establish the run, get Wayne Gallman going. Former uh, Cowboy Alfred Morris, revenge game, get him going maybe. So we'll see if they can do that. But I want them to stick with the run. I have that written down later. Um, Dallas's defense allows 30.0 points per game, third worst in the NFL. So the Giants, you know, they've scored over 30 points once this year. That was in the week, I think it was six or five, game against the Dallas Cowboys when they lost 37-34. I know they had a defensive touchdown that game. But at the same time, they scored over 30 that game. So if they can find a way to score over 30 again, I like our chances of winning. I don't think we do it because our offense is just god awful and Daniel Jones can't move around that well these days. But at the same time, it is possible. So I have to say that Golden Tate is doubtful. He might be out at this point. I made this graphic yesterday. So Golden Tate, don't expect him to be there. It's, you know, I'll talk about his replacement later. Uh, Leighton Van Der Esch is probably out for Dallas. I think he is officially out for Dallas, so that will help. Of course, they have Jalen Smith, who has not played as well as he has in the past, but Jalen Smith's still got to be scared of. Um, the other linebacker filling in for him is not that good. I forgot the guy's name, but he's really, I probably have it right here, honestly. What is his name? Joe Thomas. He's, I don't think he's that good, so don't worry about him. Um, so I want them to run the ball, of course. I mean, I want to see the Giants at least get 30 carries this game, have an even um, you know, passing attack, running attack, try to balance it out. Of course, if you start off down 14 nothing, then you might have to change your plans. But even then, like at least try to stick with it. Um, I don't want to leave this game seeing Wayne Gallman have nine carries for 62 yards and be like, why didn't he run the ball more? Like I don't want to leave the game like that, especially if we lose. That would be a tough thing to swallow right there. Big day for Daniel Jones, possibly. Dallas is weak at cornerbacks, so I think Daniel Jones might have a big game here. I think last week against the Ravens, he played one of his better games that I've ever seen him play. I know the stats don't really show it. It was like one touchdown, 280-something yards. But when you actually go back and watch the game closely, I thought Daniel Jones did about as well as he possibly could. Did he miss some throws? Yes. I mean, any quarterback will. But I think Daniel Jones, for the most part, played very well. And if he you know, has another performance like that going into the offseason, if you know we unfortunately lose this game or even the playoffs... I will feel very good about him going into next year. So hopefully he puts out another good performance for us. Um, watch out for Giants killer Demarcus Lawrence. Yes, Demarcus Lawrence has had a pretty good year. He's had like six or seven sacks, but he's been a productive player this year. He had an off year last year. Now he's back playing well. So that's a guy to watch out for. Of course, our tackles have to be uh, just our offensive line in general has to be a lot better this game, honestly. Evan Engram has played well versus Dallas in his career. I kind of did that off the top of my head, but I feel like back... You know, even back his rookie year, I think last year in uh, 2019, he had a couple good games against them as well. He scored a touchdown against them, I think it was last year. This year, I forget what he did in the Dallas game this year. He might not have done much, honestly, but I feel like he's had a, at least two or three really good games against Dallas, so Evan Engram could possibly be a nice piece here. He did have an ankle injury. He should be fine, though. Uh, offensive line has to look at least competent this week. I'm not asking them to be great, but... You know, Dallas has a decent defensive line. It's not the best. I mean, Alden Smith's had a good year. They got rid of Everson Griffin. Who else do they have? I talked about Demarcus Lawrence, of course. Who plays? The, oh, they have the rookie. Is it uh, Gallimore? Who's their rookie? Oh, uh, yeah, Neville Gallimore is pretty good. Randy Gregory is pretty good as well. So they have some guys on that defensive line. So our offensive line cannot be crap, and that definitely is a big part of this game. Um, I think Dallas's offensive line has been playing a lot better, so we'll, go, we'll get into that later, but the Giants' offensive line cannot allow Daniel Jones to be sacked six or seven times. Like, we cannot win that way, so it has to be better. Um, and also, their offensive line coach, it, it came out a few days ago, I'm sure you guys know, but their offensive line coach, Googs, as they call him, is out with COVID, so I guess their assistant offensive line coach will now be the main guy this week, so we'll see if that affects them in any way. Maybe it helps them. I don't know. Uh, more Dante Pettis, less Austin Mack. So, yeah, people that like, you know, beat right for the Giants and all that are talking about Austin Mack. 
possibly being in the doghouse because of his performance last week. He had one very clear and obvious drop, another play against Marlon Humphrey, where I think Humphrey just made a terrific play, but it was still a target and a catchable pass for him. So maybe the Giants go with Dante Pettis, who had two catches last week. Um, I think Pettis has some of the more upside in this receiving group, so I, I want to see Pettis play more as a former second-round pick. Um, it seems like Deion Lewis is still going to return kicks. I kind of wanted to give Pettis a chance there. Because the way I look at it is, yes, Pettis will fumble sometimes, but Deion Lewis has also fumbled a good amount. So you might as well put the more athletic, faster, and just more dynamic athlete back there to possibly take one to the house and help the Giants special teams. So that's something I would prefer, but I think Deion Lewis is still going to have that role. And speaking of special teams, I've looked at it before. Dallas has had one of the better special teams in football this year. So that is something to watch out for. The Giants have struggled in that category, so we'll see how that affects the game. I prefer more Will Hernandez. I, li I like Shane Lemieux for the future, his outlook. This is not me quitting on Shane Lemieux by any means, but his pass blocking has been so bad. And for the Giants offensive lines giving up, you know, some games where they've given up six, seven, eight sacks. The Cardinals won the um, one last week against the Ravens. They need to have a better offensive line. Shane Lemieux gives you more in the run blocking game, but in 2020 as NFL where you're passing the ball more, I really think Will Hernandez... The drop-off from pass blocking from Lemieux to Hernandez is a lot bigger than the run blocking gap from Lemieux to Hernandez. You know what I mean? So I'd rather see Will Hernandez in there. He's the safer option. I don't want to see Shane Lemieux get beat multiple times and have Daniel Jones be put in the ground. So I prefer more Will Hernandez. I don't really expect it to change because the Giants really haven't done that much, but I think Will Hernandez would be the safer option in this game. So we'll see what they do with the offensive line rotation. Of course, he will play some, but I kind of hope he plays a lot more. For the defense now, Dallas averages 25.1 uh, points per game on offense. So they've had a nice offense lately. I'll look at the point differentials, actually. I'll get to that later, honestly. But they've scored a lot of points recently. Dallas has been much, more, um, much better offensively in recent weeks. I think they've put up over 30 points in two of their past three games. They scored like uh, in the high 20s, the other ones. So they've had a good offense in recent weeks, something to watch out for. And for the Giants, they have no pass rush whatsoever. So if you're giving a guy like Andy Dalton, who needs time, three, four, five, six seconds to throw back there every time, might be a long day for the Giants. And we'll get to Dallas's receivers. I mean, they're tough to guard as well. So Andy Dalton, speaking of him, has had at least two touchdown passes in um, his past four games. He had two, 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 and then uh, three. So he's had a really nice uh, month or so, Andy Dalton. So that's a guy to watch out for. If they don't pressure him, it might be a long day. Zeke Elliott and or Zeke Elliott and Tony Pollard. They have been a pretty nice running back deal. I know Zeke has had a down year. Zeke can surprisingly get a thousand yards this year if he gets like sixty something yards. I think the number is. But um, he did look better last week. He looked a lot more healthy. He missed the game two weeks ago. Came back last week, rushed for, I think it was like maybe close to 100. It was like 97 yards against the Eagles. He looked a lot more healthy, looked a lot more better. Um, and Tony Pollard's a backup, of course, but he's he's got some juice. He's a good running back. He started against the Niners a couple weeks ago and absolutely destroyed them. So that's a guy to watch out for. Tony Pollard, is he's no slouch. He's a good running back. Uh, Dallas's offensive line has looked better. I've talked about that. Andy Dalton's been sacked. I think it was, I looked it up, it was like two times, two times, two times, and like maybe four. Like, they've been better. It's not like Andy Dalton's getting killed back there. So they've looked better. The Giants' uh, pass rush is god-awful, so that's definitely going to help them look a lot better than they really are. Um, so Dallas, uh, the wide receiver and cornerback matchups, this is like the big thing. So what I personally expect is that it's going to be a lot of James Bradbury on either Amari Cooper or Michael Gallup. I think mostly Amari Cooper. The slot, of course, it's going to be mostly... CeeDee Lamb plays mostly slot for the Cowboys. Sometimes they put Amari Cooper in there. It'll mostly be CeeDee Lamb against Darnay Holmes. I remember the last time these two teams played, Darnay Holmes had a nice play to negate a touchdown for CeeDee Lamb. So, you know, I don't feel confident about that matchup because Lamb's a really good player. But the one I'm concerned about, and I've, I've mentioned this in the past, um, I'm concerned about Isaac Yadam against Michael Gallup. I don't know Gallup's numbers off the top of my head. I can look it up real quick. But Michael Gallup's been really freaking good lately. So Michael Gallup Gallup's a guy that doesn't get a lot of attention because the other two receivers on his team get a lot of the spotlight. But Michael Gallup, who uh, some people thought was a free agent this year, I would definitely would have been interested in him, but it's next year he's a free agent. But he's a guy that's been tearing it up lately. So here's what he's been doing lately. Um, 
121 yards last week. He only had 26 yards, but a touchdown the week prior. Had 86 yards in week 13. So this guy can light it up sometimes. He's you know going to have like 800 yards this year. He's not amazing, but for the role he plays on a team where he's the third option basically in the passing game, he's put together a nice year, honestly. So that's a guy to watch out for. Isaac Yadam has not looked good in recent weeks, so that's the one matchup I'm really concerned about. Kyler Fackrell should be back for the Giants defense. He was in IR for a few weeks. Um, the Giants need that because I saw too much of David Mayo at outside linebacker last week, and David Mayo, I don't know, man. Seems like a nice guy, but he was awful. I, I think I put that stat out there. He played like 50-something snaps last week, or maybe 40 50 something, 40 something, somewhere between there, and had no tackles. Like, I don't know what he was doing out there. I saw him miss a couple tackles, that's for sure. But David Mayo um, was doing nothing last week for the Giants. I'm happy to see Kyler Fackrell out there, a guy that can now contain the edge. We saw the Ravens beat us on the outside, on the outside runs so much last week. Now we get a guy that can hopefully contain the edge. Kyler Fackrell had a really good first month and a half of the uh, season. Slowed down a lot. I don't know if that was because of the injury or not, but hopefully he's good now and shows us, uh, you know, what he was doing the first month of the year. He had a pick six or, yeah, pick six against Dallas the first time they played this year, so maybe he makes another big splash play like that. And Dallas's tight ends always destroy us. Dalton Schultz is the one to watch out for. So Schultz, I'll look him up as well. I don't think he's had many great games recently, but at the same time, the Giants never covered tight ends for Cowboys, whether it's um, Jason Witten, of course. Um, who was, I just had his name in my mind. Uh, what's his name? The guy, oh, Blake Jarwin, and of course, Dalton Schultz. So Schultz has, you know, he had a touchdown two weeks ago. He's had quiet numbers. He had some big games earlier in the year. We had 88 yards in a touchdown. He had 72 yards in a touchdown in week four. So it's been a while since he's had like a monster game, but, you know, the Giants against tight ends, it's always a concern. So that's one to watch out for. So Dalton Schultz would be that guy to possibly go off for the Dallas passing game for tight ends. Now, I want to get to the stat because, as you know, I'm picking the Cowboys to win this game. I picked them. I, just, I make these predictions to try to be accurate. I don't want this to happen, but I try to be accurate for you guys. You guys know I don't really, you know, I don't give you any BS. I tell you what I actually think is going to happen, and I hope I'm wrong because I've been wrong before. But anyway, the past three games for the Giants. Now, this is like basically the total points for and against. The Giants have been outscored the past three games 73-26. to 26 god awful i mean that's that's actually terrible so the Giants are averaging like a little over eight points per game on offense the last three games and they've allowed 73 points total the past three games dallas on the other hand has outscored their opponents 108 to 57 so they're coming in the past three games riding really high they're a really hot team the giants are the complete opposite they're very cold they have no offense no pass rush i just you know i want to think this is a close game and i do think it is it either goes one way or another it's going to be you know, we beat Dallas by like a field goal or four, or Dallas just kind of destroys us. I mean, I feel like it could go either. I don't really see a scenario where the Giants kill them. I don't think this is going to be like the 2011, um, you know, week 17 game. We don't really have that type of offense, obviously. But if the Giants win this game, it'll be running the ball effectively. It'll be maybe getting to the passer sometimes. Like that would definitely help. And we have to shut down their wide receivers, which is a lot to ask for. So I think the Giants are a bit outmanned in this game. The Giants lose a lot of games due to lack of talent, and I feel like this might be another instance of it. Hopefully I'm wrong, though, because I do want to make the playoffs. That would be great, but I have the score as 27-23 Dallas. Maybe it's a bit more high scoring, but hey, 23 points for the Giants offense. We'll sign up for it, right? Because we've had some a lot worse offensive performances than 23. So Dallas is a tough team when you have no pass rush to hold under 30 points, and I'm hoping that's the case here, but... If they scored over 30, I would not be surprised either. So that's something to watch out for. But anyway, hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully I come on here on you know tomorrow afternoon. I don't know what I'm going to do the update video or the uh, post game video. I guess here's part of what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it like this. If the Giants lose, I'll just come out with it right away. If the Giants win, I'm probably going to wait till after the Washington game to at least know what our fate is like i'm not gonna like make a video and be like well i don't know if we're gonna be in the playoffs or not i kind of want to wait and see what happens but if we lose the game on sunday i'll probably just come out with a reaction right away so that's probably how i'll do it but anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed this video hopefully they win tomorrow leave in the comments your score predictions hopefully more you know giants winning predictions unlike myself but hopefully you enjoyed this video and i'll talk to you guys next time